Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Yonko speaking, and this is a mother f- stick up. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> but seriously though, red dot to your forehead. Put all that negative stuff in this bag so I can throw this bitch in the ocean. So Insomniac might already be goaded, and Spider-Man 2 is definitely game of the year. And I say that with the utmost respect to Tears of the Kingdom and Jedi Survivor. But, you know what I mean? Bump all that. Let's converse. Apparently there were a few concerns from some folks about the new gameplay that we saw about a week ago. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little perplexed. Mostly because, in my subjective opinion, I thought the demo was fire. With that being said, your boy's not saying folks shouldn't have different opinions, everybody should be like-minded. Now the first concern I heard about was regarding the symbiote suit. Now I can see how some of y'all might prefer it to look more sleek and smooth like some of the old ones have before in the comic books and other Spider-Man games. But I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I kinda like the way it looks, because it looks like what it is, which is another life form lash itself onto another life form, i.e. Peter. As a parasite, it kinda makes sense. If you look closely, it really is moving like that life form is really alive. Now, I'm not saying that that's my favorite design or that there aren't any designs that look better, but when you're sinking countless hours into the story, are we really gonna care? Mm, probably not. Not to mention, it's Insomniac. If it's anything like the last two games, I'm sure we'll get more than one iteration of the black suit. Now, I'll tell you what would be real crazy, though, is if Miles gets a temporary stint with the black suit. Now, that would be wild, but, you know, we'll see. Moving on. Now, the next thing I heard people had a bit of an issue with was the swinging mechanics and the animations. And let's remember, y'all, this was a 12-minute demo built specifically for this showcase that showed off 10 minutes of gameplay out of a game that will probably take us somewhere between 30 and 50 hours to beat, not even including DLC. And on top of all that, in this 10 to 12 minute demo, we only saw a couple of sections where they were swinging. And Insomniac already confirmed that this demo wasn't reminiscent of the final product. Come on y'all, let's let them cook. We all just need to breathe, like Fab and 04. I'm also pretty sure that they purposefully didn't show us any of the swinging tricks, as this was a built to show off the wingsuit and the web slingshot, which was easily the sexiest thing to your boy in the whole damn demo. Which is something I have been asking for since Spider-Man 2018. At least they're finally listening to the gaming Spider-Man community. I mean, these f they put in about 50 animations between Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man 2018. Why couldn't they put in 50 f one? Y'all see how crazy that sounds? Yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying is, let's give it a little perspective here. None of us have had any hands-on gameplay and they showed us what they wanted to show us. Point is, some folks are basically saying that from the short demo that we saw, that Insomniac basically lied about getting the full use of the PS5 capabilities while making or playing Spider-Man 2. And I gotta say, something that was confirmed today, or, or yesterday, in an interview with the creative director, is that we will be able to go to different boroughs. And if we can do that, we're definitely getting the full use of the PS5 capabilities. Not to mention the seamless switching between Miles and Peter, which was also confirmed through open world play. It'll be like GTA 5, but probably even smoother. Another situation that folks seem to be concerned about was the amount of enemies that we could potentially have to fight in Spider-Man 2. And to that I ask y'all, what are we, saw for something? Nah, I'm just playing. I'm scared of that too. <laughs> I guess the question we all have is, if we're fighting this many enemies, I mean, will we even be able to enjoy or appreciate our encounters with each one? But I wouldn't be too worried about that for a couple of reasons. The first one being that, by this point, we've all probably played Marvel Spider-Man 2018. And let's be honest, we fought a lot of MFs in that. We started off the game thinking that we were going to be fighting Fisk for the whole thing, just to find out that it was about Mr. Negative. And then halfway through the game, we watch Mr. Negative and it becomes about Doc Ock. And then that whole mix, we gotta fight the Sinister Six. And even after all that, that's not included in our encounters with Shocker, Tombstone, and Taskmaster. And if y'all played the DLC, we had to fight Hammerhead and Silver Sable. And of course, Black Cat is always an issue. All that is to say, we should trust the Somniac, cause they haven't dropped the ball yet. And in all honesty, if y'all have played any of the old Spider-Man games, starting from the 0204 movie ones, going into Shattered Dimensions and Web of Shadows, and Point is, we're always fighting a lot of enemies in Spider-Man games. And this time, we got Miles and Genki with us. The second reason why we shouldn't be so worried is that we could tell, even from this short demo, that a lot of this is going to be about either fighting with or at least just protecting the enemies that we generally have. I mean, the whole demo was about Miles and Pete trying to stop Kraven from killing or capturing the lizard or Doc Connors. Whichever name you prefer, it's cool with me.
I also don't want us to all lose sight of who Venom is in the first place because originally people got to think he's really just an anti-hero. He's much less of an enemy. If y'all ever read Lethal Protectors, that's Venom's origin. Basically, he's supposed to be the dark side of Spider-Man where he'll do what he feels is necessary. Now you could think it's stronger or weaker will depending on who kills and who saves, but I guess that's up for debate. Me personally, I think it takes a stronger will to not kill, but I also can see how it might be smarter to kind of get people out the paint if they're gonna keep wreaking havoc don't get me wrong though we're gonna have to run several phases with venom before we possibly team up we still don't know if craven or venom are the final bosses and if you want to hear me talk a little bit more about what bringing venom into this universe does for this universe go check out my last short now the last concern that i can remember hearing or seeing about was about the ui or the heads up display and how it looks a little bit busy now i can see how some folks feel that way from the demo because you got the two wheels in the bottom left and right corners and then you got your health bar in the top left and on the right top right it's your webs and probably your takedowns and whatever whatever and the reason your boy doesn't really have much of an issue with it is because i feel like most of your focus is going to be on the center of the screen when you're in the middle of fighting so those things will quickly become something that you don't even notice but also knowing insomniac and just the way games are made today they'll make it so you can turn it off if you really want to and the last thing that was confirmed in the interviews that happened between yesterday and today is that this game takes place 10 months after miles morales's game so this will be interesting but that's all your boy really has for you today y'all should go check out my last short where i talk about the venom verse and how insomniac might be trying to basically create their own insomniac marvel spider-man universe or venom verse throughout these games but we'll talk about that in another video now look at me now look at this clip now look back at me i'm falling free like Can you play that again?